Welcome everybody to another edition of Dan's Grand Valley Railroad. So uh, the last few videos I've uh, talked about the power problems with the 306 locomotive and uh, you know we, we tried doing a bunch of tests. The, the last test uh, that we did taking it over to neighbor Mike's really uh, sort of answered the question for me and that was that the NCE power cab um, doesn't supply enough power or amperage for my layout uh, when I start running three or more locomotives. And the 306 locomotive having a problem uh, where, you know, it, it drains too much. Let's pull it out here. It, it's got a larger amperage drain than the other ones. Uh, I'm not going to address that problem right now. Uh, it is a problem. I acknowledge it. I am going to take the locomotive apart, try to figure out what it is, either a decoder or a motor or a gear or some piece of metal that's, you know, in there somehow. But we're not going to deal with that today. Um, being that Mike's layout has plenty of power, I opted to go ahead and pick up the NCE SB5 Smart Booster, which is going to add 5 amps of power to my layout. And that should be more than enough to run uh, many of my locomotives, including the 306. Let me give, uh, let me give this uh, Bachman's a little more power to get that load up the hill. That is, uh, that's a big train for those guys those Bachmans don't have a really good speed control so uh, in order to make it realistic coming down the slope <clears throat> uh, they'll start speeding up I have to run it pretty slow and it's almost not enough to get it up the grade here to get into the tunnel so uh, let me just uh, we'll, we'll let it come out here and we'll stop it right there so anyway I I believe that uh adding this booster is going to help tremendously. It's not going to solve the problem with the uh, 306 issue, but it is going to be a welcome addition to the layout. So I'm going to be installing that today. I'm not going to do a complete install. There are tons of videos out there of guys installing these on their layouts. Um, I'll go through it. Uh, it's very, very simple. Here's what I have now. And, uh, uh, I'm going to be taking that out, and then the uh, power cab connects to it a little bit differently because basically this is a power cab inside. It does what this does, so this just needs to be a controller, and um, I'll go over that when it comes time to hook it up. Uh, so uh, the Flying Crow, Robert, also recommended uh, if I did go to the... Uh, smart booster to add an EB1 circuit breaker uh, board here, which I went ahead and purchased. So I am going to be hooking that up uh, along with the smart booster. Now, reading the instructions in here, it does have circuit breaker capability, uh, but it's limited. So they do recommend uh, adding the dedicated circuit breaker. I guess Robert had some issues in the past with his system. And, you know, it can be as simple as dropping a screwdriver or something across these uh, tracks and shorting it out that can cause real damage to this. So I'm going to follow Robert's advice and uh, hook that up as well. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing on this video. I'm going to first start off by undoing what I have here. And I'll show you uh, one of the concerns I have here. I can do it here. These are the track feed wires that I have going. I have on this layout, it's a four by eight, it's pretty small. I've got one set of feeds here, another one over there behind that building, and another one here in my yard, right about here somewhere. They come up from under the table, as you can see, and are connected with wire nuts. I want to change that. I'm going to install a bus block under the table where the positive and negative will be. There'll be a bus block for each one. Positives will hook up on one, negatives on the other, and then those will feed 
through these wires and go to the smart booster. So I want to do that just to make it more sanitary and clean it up a little bit. I'm not sure if this is even causing some of my issue with amperage draw. I want to get this cleaned up a little bit better, a little bit more solid with the wiring, and then we'll go ahead and install the booster. Okay, I'm going to start here by uh, just unplugging the NCE power cab. Unplug the power. I'll just let that hang there for now, and I'll uh, go ahead and unplug the power cab, get that safely out of the way. Don't want any, don't want any accidents. And then this is just connected this panel with a couple of screws. Now we will use that down the line. Uh, the new power booster, the uh, the power cab will plug directly into that. Uh, this can be used for uh, uh, to hook other power cabs to or controllers. So we'll we'll keep that handy. Unplug the power. This is the the thing that I have hanging here. The the wall wart. Let's see if it comes out. Yep, sure did. So I've got that out of the way. And then now you can see more clearly how I have these wires. Those are going to the track feed. So this is where it connects. So I am going to label these because I have them, you know, polarity wise, they are correct. So I want to label them and get them disconnected so I can hook them to the new bus block. Okay, so I disconnected the wires and the wire nuts, and I just want to show you here what I did. I put a piece of tape on the positive side on each of the feeds. Now, this one is a striped wire with a red stripe, so that's kind of obvious. The two black ones, it wouldn't be obvious which one was positive. Um, and then I have another set here, which for whatever reason, I chose the white one to be the positive and not the red one. Uh, so that's the positive. So um, uh, that's something I could change, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. So then let's go over to the bench and I'll show you how I'm setting up the bus block. Um, they basically come with these blade connectors here. So here's you know what it looks like um, just on its own. And basically each one of these connects to the other. So um, if I put a wire here, it's connected here. So if I put a, another wire on this side, they'll be connected, but not laterally. So you use these little blade deals and put them in there like I did here. And now all of these will be connected together. So if I put a wire here, I can put it on any of these terminals and it will be connected uh, together. So uh, I made this one positive, this one negative. So these two blocks will mount under the table. I've got some little screws handy that I found out in my shop that will work nicely to connect those up there. And uh, then I'll have those three wires that are positive will be on here and then one going to the new power supply and likewise with the negative. So it'll just be a more neat and sanitary connection. So let me get that done and I'll, uh, I'll show you what I got. Okay, so I didn't wanna show you the tedium of uh, getting these stripped and, and put into the bus blocks, but uh, I got that done and then I just wanted to test it. So I put the power leads uh, back into the old uh, power cab system here. Sorry, I don't want to drop it. Plugged in the power cab and I've got trains running. Everything's good. I took <laughs> I took everything off the track just in case there was any kind of a short or I screwed up something. Uh, but always good to just test uh, as you go. So now I'm going to get these bus blocks installed under there. A power feed to go to the new booster. And then we'll be ready to hook up the booster and see how it goes. Okay, so under the table, you can see I've got both terminal blocks uh, mounted up here. And I've got the track feed wires connected on this end. And then the two wires that are going to go 
to the booster are coming out that way. I'm gonna put the booster down there on that shelf. So I've got the wire kind of hanging over that way and then I'll uh, get it cut to the right length and then we'll install it over there on that little shelf there. But I just wanted to show you the terminal blocks up here and the wires. Now, earlier I was talking about positive and negative. Now with a DCC system, um, it's not, it doesn't matter. Either rail can be positive or negative. It doesn't really matter in DCC. What I should have said was common rail. So in other words, we want everything that is on this rail to be connected together and everything that's on the other rail, inside or outside, they all need to be connected together. If I was mixing these up somehow and I had one on this one over on this side and vice versa, then we'd have a problem, we'd have a short and it wouldn't work. So uh, that's what I should have said uh, instead of positive and negative, common rail and the other rail. But uh, so anyway, that's where we're at. Okay, so I've done a little uh, cleanup here on the shelf uh, down here. Um, I've just uh, made some room. This is where the unit's going to go. That's my 12 volt power supply that connects all the lighting that is not Woodland Scenics, just plugs. So the uh, street lamps that are on the docks and over by the station and the traffic signals, that's all controlled by that. The red and black wire go up to terminal blocks up there and then those connect like that. So I've uh, pushed that back a little bit. This is the power supply for the new booster unit, the SB5. So I've got it running right along here and then plugging in right up here on my power strip. And uh, then uh, it's got this here, uh, the unit, it plugs into the front of the unit. So uh, I just wanted to show you here are the two track leads, the feeds that go to those new terminal blocks we just put up there. This is the EB1 circuit breaker. So I've got that sitting here. And then I just came off of that with a couple of leads to go into the power unit. So let's grab the unit here and I'll show you. It's just going to sit right here like that. So let's go ahead and plug in the track supply feeds and then we'll plug in the power and after a moment we should see some lights come on there we go and we've got a light on over here as well for the circuit breaker um, so now this if it if the circuit gets interrupted and it breaks that red light will go off and it'll try to reconnect every two to four seconds and if the whatever shorting is still happening, it won't connect. Um, same thing with uh, the red light here. If there is a problem and the, uh, uh, the circuit breaker goes off, that'll go out. So now it's just a matter of putting in the power cab. So because the smart booster is actually a power cab in here, all of the workings to, uh, to run everything are in there. This now just becomes a controller. So what you have to do is the wire that came with it, the coiled four wire uh, cable, now goes right in the right side, right here, just like that. And then we plug, obviously, the other side goes into the power cap. So now you'll see it boot up and uh, it's ready to go. So let's go see with everything plugged in. Let's see if we can run some trains. All right, so we're gonna start with uh, number 315 there. So then this is just like, uh, just like before. Um, I'm gonna select loco, three, one, five, enter. And let's go ahead and start it up. That takes a number three on this MTH loco. And there it goes. I will hit headlight. And uh, that should, let me see if the, uh, yep, the headlight is on. And uh, let's see, we have bell. And we should have horn. 
good. So I'm just gonna start running this a little ways, get it on its way. There it goes. And I'm just doing a number one there. And then a number two. And I've removed all the uh, train cars. So I just wanted to do a locomotive test like we did before with the three locomotives and see if they'll run without issue now, even though the 306 is still messed up. So, all right, let's, uh, let's just have that. We'll just keep that at a number four throttle setting and we'll let that go around and do its thing. Let's bring up another locomotive. So while 315 is uh, chugging around, I've brought 307 over here. So let's do the same thing. I will recall, select loco 307, enter. We'll start her up. There she goes. Get the headlight on. Classification lights on. And let's start him off. There it goes. So just like before, we've got no problem running two, and uh, that one's off. So now I'm going to bring over 306. Okay, I've got 306 staged, and for those of you who are just joining me, the reason there's a gaudy piece of uh, handwritten paper there, it's because it's a long story. You can go back to the videos before, but just to denote that this is 306 so I didn't get confused. So. Let me get that plugged in here so that uh, the one coming out, there it goes. Doesn't hit it, there she goes, okay. And I've got them all running at a four. So there goes 306. That's the one that had the issues running with any of the other locos on the track. And it looks right now like it's doing just fine. Um, I just want to make sure all three of these can just do their thing at a, you know, relatively slow speed without having issue. So I've got them all spaced pretty properly so they're not going to run into each other. And then I can start uh, speeding them up a little bit and make sure that uh, we've got the power to run it. Now, again, 306 definitely has more of an amperage draw, so I'm gonna have to figure out. But there it is, it's working good. This tells me I could run it in a consist, just like we did over at Neighbor Mike's. So I think for the most part, this booster is a positive success. All right, we've got all three running at a, uh, a four setting on the throttle. So uh, 307 is first up, so I'm just gonna increase that to about a 10. And I'm just running a uh, 28, zero to 28 on the throttle. Gonna put them all up to 10. And here comes 306, that's one that makes me nervous. That's when things tend to happen. Uh-oh, I gotta stop one of them. <laughs> All right, thank goodness for the all stop button or we would have had a wreck. All right, they're all running 10. Not a problem. I'm gonna have to stop another one. Oh no, Woo. goodness, stop the wrong one. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's uh, this over and under here. This is this is a, uh, a pretzel. It's a wreck waiting to happen. All right, they're all running 10 without issue. I think I'll go, uh, let's just floor it, huh? Let's floor all of them. <laughs> let's start with 306. That's our problem, child. If I floor that and stuff happens, then I'm worried. Okay, I got them all floored. Oh no, okay, we're gonna miss. Woo! All right, they're all floored. The system is holding, everything's running. I would call this a complete success. I gotta stop these now or Something's going to wreck, so. <laughs> all right. Well, I ran them all full speed. 306 did not bog down the system and make it all end. So I'm pretty happy. Wow, that's awesome. All right, so again, I'm very pleased with the system here. 
smart booster solve my problem for now. Uh, again, I will get into the 306 to see what's causing the issue. Uh, but that's for down the line. Right now I can run it in a consist or use it, you know, which is cool because it was just sitting in a box not being used. So now I can run longer trains, use three locomotives instead of two and uh, do that kind of stuff. So that that's cool. I'm very happy about that. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, now that that is the controller, you can no longer uh, program on a program track, programming track. You have to program on the main through here. Uh, the exception is, like I mentioned earlier when I was doing the install, if you save this panel, you can take this whole system and take it to your bench and hook it up to a dedicated programming track with the power supply, just like we had set up over here. And that can be your dedicated programming track. So you wanna hang on to this. You wanna hang on to the wire and the uh, transformer and everything, which I'm looking for, but I think I put it aside somewhere. Anyway, uh, that way you can still have a dedicated programming track using this. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's it for this week. One other thing I wanted to mention, uh, neighbor Mike and I went to uh, Rocky Mountain Train Supply yesterday, just looking around and Mike needed some scenery items. So I ended up picking up this little uh, Union Pacific uh, older style caboose. The uh, I guess you'd call that a cupola caboose. Uh, I haven't taken it out of the package yet. It's a used item. Pre-owned was $5. So I figured now that I've got a third locomotive going, I could actually have uh, three trains, you know, complete with uh, uh, cabooses and everything. So down the line, I'm definitely going to weather this and we're going to get it out of the package and get it going. Uh, and I might even put lights in it like I did the NCE uh, light it board, maybe to uh, have lights in it and uh, red lights, maybe even some green lights. I'm not sure, but uh, I have it in the package. We'll save that for a, an upcoming program. So uh, look forward to that. And then one other thing I wanted to mention, since it's Christmas time, this is uh, December 5th, uh, I'm sorry, December 3rd. Um, look for my Christmas Eve cab ride video that I did, I think a couple years ago. Uh, look for that coming up. I'm going to republish it. Um, remember I made this winter scene uh, in there, the trees, the kids playing and everything, and uh, I kind of keep that in there. But uh, uh, look for that video. I'm not going to make a new one this year. I just don't have the time. But uh, look for that coming up uh, soon. You can also uh, find it just in my video list. I'll put a link to it right up here so you can check it out, uh, get you in the mood for the holiday season. So anyway, well, thank you for watching and uh, thanks for your support and your subscriptions uh, and everything. It's awesome, you guys really rock. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. I try to answer all of them. If I, if I can answer your questions, I certainly will. And uh, I just appreciate you guys. So thank you, be blessed, and we'll see you next video. Now let's, you know, for giggles, let's just go 10. Recall 315, we'll make them all 10. Recall 306, 10. Okay, now something happened. It blew the circuit. Great.